How's it going, everyone? This is Wimbo. Today we are going to have another Blender lighting tutorials and talking about how to block the light. You heard it right. We're trying to block the light. Well, in photography or cinematography, usually we have a light modifier. It's called the flag. The purpose of the flag is trying to reduce the intensity of the light, or even just trying to block the light. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you why you need the flag, and how to build them inside Blender, and also what are the smarter way to using these special flags in order to make your scene looks beautiful. All right, without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, now we're inside Blender. As you can see here, I already have a scene built in here, and this is going to be the final render composition and lighting. The lighting seems a little bit different because you have certain depth in here and we have quite a bit of shadow going on here. So here's the scene going on here. If I'm kind of cruising around here, you see there's a background and you don't see nothing else. And it seems like everything lighting looks very simple, but actually it's not. So I'm going to show you step by step. The first question is why you need the flag? Well, technically for photography or videography, and usually the flag is to use trying to block certain amount of light. You can say just reduce the light intensity in a very subtle way because sometimes the lighting are just so powerful and there's no way to really dial it down. So using the flag is really nice to kind of reduce some light. Sometimes we just use a foam board or something to block the light, creating shadows in order to have some very interesting lines going on here. So this is what I did. As you can see here in the top one, this area is the viewport you can see that this in the solid mode so you will see everything here so it has quite a bit of things going on here on the right hand side i already named it this flag one two and also special flag three and four but let's go over one by one so if i'm go to the flag number one which is the top one right as you can see here we have a light is the sunlight. I would say this is very rarely I using this type of light because it's very harsh inside Blender. If I'm actually close all these flags, you can see the light is just overwhelming, it's way too much. But why do I still want to use this type of light? Because I'm illuminating a cosmetic products. Most of the time for cosmetic products, usually the direct sunlight or the harsh sunlight usually creating some really harsh shadow. It's kind of a very neat look and for this type of products because you have very nice defined shadows. It looks very cool. It just works very well for cosmetic products and it became a one type of a style. In many of my Blender tutorials, I was talking about using soft light and how to creating them and why people love to using the soft light for product. And however, in some cases, the hard light, like the sunlight, works best to really creating the feeling about certain products. So in this case, we're using very harsh sunlight. One interesting about the sunlight inside Blender, if you hit G to grab it, it doesn't really changing anything on the position on the Z axis because I assuming the light is always up there. But if you hit R to rotate it, you can see their lighting directions can be changed. And also if you go to the top view, if you go to R, it still can change in direction these two ways. The sunlight in the blender, the Z axis just making difference. So this is I just temporarily put them up there just trying to help my brain to think a little bit better because the light is put in here, but it doesn't make sense. So I just put it up here to help my brain to visualize what's going on here. So the first thing I want to enable is the flag number one. The flag number one is actually creating some sort of like line over here. You can see here, this is the background and the light is up here. So the light is coming from the sun and hit the light blocker or you can say flag and actually creating this harsh shadow down here because i'm framing this it's just very subtle on the side it doesn't adding a whole lot into the frame but it's really adding an interest in the background already which is one single thing and the next thing i added is the flag number two as you can see here we have another flag down here and this is just kind of barely close to the 
object right here, right here. And then you may ask why Wimble, I don't see this in the viewport and I can only see this in the solid mode simply because I disable the visibility of the camera on here. If you go to the object property under the flag, each of these and go here, if you check the camera, you can actually see it's in there. It's just going to block the view of the camera. If I'm uncheck the camera, so it's still working, it's still creating the shadow down here, but you wouldn't see this in front of camera, which is fantastic. If you're going to do the same thing inside of your actual photography studio, this is going to cause a lot of issues because the flags are actually gonna block the camera views. You need to start cutting a hole in the flag and when you're shooting this, there's a lot of stuff you need to deal with. But inside Blender, very magical. You just don't need to worry about it. Just uncheck the camera, you're all good for the flag. And then let's move to the special flag number three. The reason I call it special because the first one and two, the on the shader editor, they're just very simple principle BSDF. I change the default color to the black. You don't have to do so. You can just leave it on white. And, uh, and also for the roughness, I just bump it all the way to one. Just make it simple. It's just like a, one single dark piece of card over here. So I actually block some light. Now that's what I did. Another different type of flag I use, actually it's a light technically. It's not a flag because it's actually generating another type of shadow. However, if I'm not convert this kind of a plane into a light, this shadow area is going to be very dark. So I just gonna cut it off to show you. Control, right click, cut it off. You will see the shadow density is very intense. So this is not very good because there's no details. So what I did is actually I hooked the emission shader and with a image textures to using that. This is kind of a lighting setup. I've been mentioning it almost on every single my lighting tutorial and the USC tutorial link on the right corner and to talk about why you need this. So I'm not going to explain detail about how to creating this type of light. However, same thing. You don't see this in here because I disabled the object visibilities on the camera. So if I enable that, this is what it looks like. Okay. So you're actually creating some fill light down here is not that dark. You see, that's very, very subtle, but it looks very nice. It's like a gradient fading in here. So this is what I call special flag, but it's almost just a light and it's creating some shadow for the background. So whatever you call it, but that's how I use this. And there's a smarter way to use it. And another one is I'm trying to creating a little bit cooler effect on this because this product, the top part of this product is just one giant piece cap. It doesn't have any details. So it looks a little bit too bulky for me. I think I want to make it looks a little bit interesting. So that's why adding another flag on the top when the sunlight hitting from this direction is actually going to creating some shadows going down here. And because of this kind of lighting, it feels like you maintain the harsh lighting in here, but it doesn't feel that harsh because all these lighting certain depths. Also the material of the product is a little bit matte. So it's not that intense when you're having a very harsh direct sunlight like this. So it works perfectly for the scene we're trying to build. Overall, you can see here if I enable that, this is what the top light looks like. And also I'm using a similar materials I did the, the other one. It's just creating some fill light on the top. Otherwise it will be too dark on the side. So I just decided to keep using this type of light. Okay. So now the very last step, you need to make sure you uncheck this camera on the visibility is going to help you have generating a really nice, clean lighting. Okay. And then this is everything I want to share in this video. If you are one of my Patreon, you'll be able to access this blender file and you can play with it. If you're not, you still can purchase this blender file in my Gumroad page to support this channel. All the links are in the description. Please hit likes and share this video. If you think this is beneficial for your understanding lighting. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.